Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the Fisherman Magazine. And, uh, and you know, in last week's forecast, we were talking a little bit about white perch throughout the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. Even mentioned a little bit about my plans for a weekend walleye trip. But first, let's talk about the obvious. It's mid-January, it's cold, so it also means it's the start of a brand new year. 2020 is here, meaning we got to get rid of 2019, 2018, 2017 stock. I'm here at Grumpy's Tackle in Seaside this Friday and Saturday, January 25th and 26th. They've got a special winter sale. All kinds of stuff for sale. In fact, I'm standing right in front of the SP Minnows, the um, the 15 F series. These suckers are going for eight dollars this weekend. Uh, some major brands, all the stuff that you use use regularly and use hard. In fact, they've got up to 50% off select items here in the shop. Uh, you buy two, get one free gulp. Spooling deals on J Braid and Power Pro. That's right here at Grumpy's for their winter sale this Saturday and Sunday. And of course, you get that special customer service with Grumpy himself. A lot of the tackle shops throughout the state, of course, are going through the same thing. You can walk into any tackle shop in Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, wherever. You walk in, they usually have a side table. It's folks trying to get rid of the old stock, and it's the stuff that you still use. But now's definitely the time to stop in the tackle shops and look to help clear out some of the shelves and empty the pegboards. Of course, you've also got those shops attending a lot of the local fishing flea markets. In fact, this Saturday at Tom's River High School South, the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association will be holding their annual Fisherman's Flea Market from 9 till 2. But you have special early bird entry. If you guys are looking for those special deals, special plugs, the stuff that you know is going to be uh, uh, off the table by the time that door opens up, you've got an early bird admission at 8 a.m. That's $8 instead of the regular admission of $4. And of course, this weekend, all this week, is the New York Boat Show at the Javits Center in Manhattan. Now, the Fisherman Magazine will have a booth there. In fact, this Saturday, you can meet the winners from the Dream Boat Contest from 2017, 2018, and of course our latest winner from 2019. They're going to be hanging out with us at the Fisherman booth and also over at the Steigercraft booth. Of course, we're giving away another Steiger to one of our subscribers fishing hard in the Dream Boat Contest. Now, if you want to win with some fresh fish right now, again, like I said, White Perch is definitely the way to go. It's good, solid action, not far from here on the Toms River. In fact, the folks at Hook House, Dennis said he's got bloodworms arriving on a regular basis. They're coming into the shop a couple of times a week, at least once, but they are moving fast. And the fact that these bloodworms are moving so fast is a good indication that there's something going on. The Toms, the Raritan, up around Sayreville, and of course the Edison Docks we talked about, the Forked River, Bass River, along the Mullica and Great Egg, and also along branches of the Delaware too. Speaking of which, I fished the Delaware River this past weekend on a windy Sunday just above Washington Crossing. We're on the hunt for walleye. Here with that update is George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, thanks, Jim. The weather sure looks nice now, but last weekend it was a completely different story. We headed out for some winter walleye. Jim Hutchinson, Josh Taylor, myself, with Captain Kevin Coolahan of Blue Heron Guide Service, and we were out trying to get some of those winter walleye. Well, Mother Nature sure had other plans, and those high winds made finesse jigging, let's say, a little impossible. But Josh was able to keep things alive, getting on a few of these quillbacks, which kept the excitement up anyway. But I was talking to Justin Lerner, and he was out fishing just 24 hours before, and he managed to get into a couple real nice walleye. It looks like we were in the right place, just in the wrong time. Now guys, the, the temperatures are dropping. We've had a couple of uh, single digit nights here and we are starting to build some ice. Even here in the southern Poconos where the, the main lake is open, some of these back coves are starting to build some ice. Not sure if they're quite fishable yet, but going up north towards New York, we are finding pockets of uh, lakes of ponds some already have four to six inches of ice, so you guys got to get out there and check them out. Be sure you got your four inches so nobody gets hurt. So get out, get on them, be safe. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Now these quillbacks, they're found throughout North America, but the quillback is also known as the quillback carp sucker. It's commonly found in the Hudson Bay, Mississippi River Basin, Great Lakes, and of course the Delaware River. Now this is not a carp, it's a quillback. They're omnivores, which usually feed in schools along the bottom, foraging over sandy or gravel bottom. 
and they eat insect larvae, crustaceans, and vegetation like algae and leaves. It just reminds me of the variety of fish that we have in New Jersey that sometimes aren't really thought about. You got quill back, you've got those carp, but how about salmon on the Aeroflex, or maybe some of those jumbo muskies, the Patcong, and also in the Delaware. All these fish provide a good opportunity, especially for the guys here along the coast, sometimes just think salt, but there's a heck of a lot of variety in New Jersey. I'm gonna add that to my bucket list, or at least a mission for 2020 to catch more of these outstanding varieties that we have here in the Garden State. Don't forget, you're going to need a freshwater fishing license. You might as well log on to the website and get that done right now. And uh, who knows, if you get that fishing license early, it might prompt you to get out and get in on some of the action, maybe the open water streams for trout as well. You can go to thefisherman.com. We have a state-by-state -state rundown of all the license and registration needs that you have as you travel from Maine all the way to Maryland. Now, while you're there, make sure you check out the report section to see who's still sailing what they're sailing for, where and how. In fact, folks are bundling up to go on the Dauntless this week, bundling up for those blackfish, also some ling and cod. In fact, I know up on the Shark River, Captain Ralph Lair sent us an email this week, said he just found a few cod and is trying to put together a mid-range trip right now. So if you want to jump on that, maybe look towards that. I know some fat ling on some of the boats out of Brielle, the Jamaica too. So there's still some uh, variety that's out there. In fact, some folks in the northern part of the region heading out on some of the party boats are also catching some porgies as well. Now, regrettably, the midweek forecast for this weekend ahead, Saturday and Sunday, January 25th and 26th, it's a little sporty. Gusty winds, a little bit of rain, and some heavy seas. So you do have some other indoor options including those sales in fishermen's flea markets if the weather keeps you off the water. You've got the fly fishing show in Edison this weekend. Um, that's Friday through Sunday. You folks down in Delaware, if you don't feel like traveling all the way up to Edison in North Jersey, don't forget Lewis Harbor, the Lewis uh, Harbor Marina. They've got their fly tying workshops every Saturday from 9 a.m. until noon. And of course, you're never too soon to scout your summer slip options. Municipal Marina at Carteret. For example, up in North Jersey, if you want to get easy access to the Hudson or the Raritan, want to give Carteret a shot, give them a call. 732-541-3820, extension 3110. Finally, I see it a lot on the social media and the message boards, the, the forums, everybody complaining about what New Jersey plans to do with striped bass. At this point, all we're talking about is options, folks. Nobody in New Jersey has discussed anything publicly in terms of striped bass. But here's what we need to do at this point. In New Jersey, we have to convene a meeting of the uh, striped bass advisory panel. Hopefully that's done at some point in the next couple of weeks. Then expect an emergency meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. You can expect that the beginning or middle of February. At that point, we can figure out what to do with striped bass and bluefish from an official standpoint here in the state of New Jersey. But this part I know. There are currently four empty seats out of 11 total on the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. So if the governor of New Jersey is not going to take our coastal fisheries seriously, I don't expect any other state to take New Jersey fishermen seriously. Come on, governor, we gotta get moving. We gotta get some appointees on that uh, New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. But as that meeting takes place, when we can officialize bluefish and striped bass, we'll let you know right here. Well, I've got a nice day. I'm going to head up to the park, get my permit for 2020. I'd advise you to do the same. And if you've got any last minute real repairs that need to be done, stop by here and look for Frankie. He wants to get loaded up as much as possible in the coming days. Last full weekend in January. Enjoy it. We are officially halfway through the way I see it. We're on our way to spring. Catch him up this week. I'll see you again next week at thefisherman.com.